So it is Sunday afternoon and I am in the office. I finished my son's hockey season today. So it was a long, long season. His last game was in Wayne, New Jersey. So we finished the game and the season's finished. It's been a long season and I'm back in the office on Sunday afternoon. Uh, so I, I finally had, had a free Sunday to get back into the office. I'm happy to do so. Happy that the long, long hockey season is over. But with that said, driving my son to the game this morning uh, in North Jersey, I noticed on the side of the road that a state trooper had stopped the vehicle. And it was obvious that uh, the officer was giving the individual a field sobriety test. And my son wanted to know why the, the gentleman was outside of the car and, and walking on the highway. And I explained to him what was going on. Now, now, now he is 12 years old. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, he, he was, um, he was, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's old enough to understand these things. So I explained to him that, that the, the, that the troopers believe possibly that, that he may be drinking or possibly having some medical issue. They weren't sure. And they were given the field sobriety test to determine whether or not he was intoxicated or impaired in some sort and I use obviously some small words and, and just a, kind of explain it to him in a in a fashion that 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 he could understand it. But the point was is that a field sobriety test was being done. And I thought it's important to understand that on the weekend, the majority of our cases do come in and a lot of cases, not only DWI in New Jersey and DUI in Pennsylvania, the cases begin with traffic stops. And what happens normally is a is a traffic stop, probably in this situation, the officers saw something, possibly the car was weaving or possibly going too slow or too fast. And it was a traffic stop initially. They they probably approached the car and realized that they possibly could have an issue regarding intoxication, possibly they smelled something, possibly they asked the driver had he been drinking anything. Now it was 5.15 in the morning. So it's unlikely that he was coming from a bar because bars close at two o'clock, he two o'clock a.m. But there, there is a possibility. Possibly he left, left someone's home later in that morning, and uh, he was still possibly suffering from the from the effects of that alcohol, or possibly had taken some some drugs or narcotics. Remember, DUI in Pennsylvania, DUI in New Jersey. You don't have to take illegal substances. You, you can be. Uh, impaired with a legal substance as well. So the point I'm trying to make here is that field sobriety testing will happen to many people uh, and you have to be prepared for that. Now I'm gonna link in an article that indicates you do not need to take the field sobriety test. Unlike the chemical test with the blood test or a breathalyzer test, the field sobriety test, you can refuse that. And if you refuse, it will not result in license suspension, unlike a chemical test. But when you do refuse the test, the, the troopers will make a note of it, and possibly you may see the prosecutor trying to use it against you if the case goes to trial. Now, um, that being said, I would probably advise someone to refuse the field sobriety test and let your attorney fight it out. The reason being is because the test, for instance, this morning, it was very, very cold. And I noticed that, that this gentleman was standing outside the vehicle in his T-shirt. A t shirt and just some pants, and it was early in the morning. And I know it was cold because it was in the 20s, and I was in a, a jacket and, and I felt cold just going to the car. This gentleman was standing outside the vehicle for who knows how long, and then being asked by troopers in full uniform to perform certain physical tests, which are hard for many individuals, even if you're not impaired. Uh, they're required balancing, and if you have any type of injuries or any type of physical. A limitations, you're going to have an issue with these tests. Now, now this gentleman didn't seem like he was that old. It seemed like he was pretty, fairly young. But again, it was cold. He's nervous. I don't believe he was going to pass any of those tests. And even, and I think that more than likely he was going to be arrested. Uh, we obviously didn't witness that. We were driving by probably about 65 miles an hour. But um, I believe that likely he's going to be arrested. He's probably out already. But the point is, is that I'm going to link in a video, a, a article that talks about field sobriety tests, what they are, the horizontal gaze and stagmus test, walk and turn test, the one leg stand test. All these tests are typically given if you're stopped for suspicion of DUI and the trooper or officer is trained to give field sobriety tests. But again, you have the option to refuse it. I would probably tell you that's a good idea if you believe you're going to have an issue with the test. 
And there's a variety of reasons you can have an issue with that test. But if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey. The website, gambonelaw.com. As always, a tremendous resource for you and your family. All of my books, my blogs, my videos are available there in one convenient format. Again, we come out with all these articles, all these blogs. Our podcast, no cost to you. Our strategy books, no cost to you, because we believe that an educated consumer is in the best possible position to receive a great result in their case. But once again, if you have questions, 215 755 9000 in Pennsylvania, 856 793 7429 in New Jersey. I'm also going to link in our latest e update, which went out on Friday to over 4,000 of our current and former clients in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Some fantastic articles this week. Have a great Sunday. Have a great weekend. Please enjoy it responsibly. And I'll talk to you all very soon.